Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Geometric Distortion with Submillimeter Accuracy in MRGRT-QA. My name is Enzo Barbary, and I am the Director of MR-Guided QA Technology at Modus QA. Why is there such interest in MRI-guided intervention? MRI has exquisite soft tissue contrast and sensitive functional and biomarker imaging capabilities relative to staging disease. MRI for guidance in intervention treatments has moved from research to clinical applications. MRGRT geometric distortion remains due to MR and MR Linux vendor design trade-offs and limitations dictated by cost, technology, and patient considerations. Origins of MRI geometric image distortion and methods of mitigating phantom QA error sources are reviewed to achieve submillimeter accuracy measurements. All MR manufacturers design gradient coils with some design trade-offs and limitations dictated by cost and patient considerations. It is not practical to design MR systems sufficiently long with small enough bores to ensure gradient coils are optimized without software correction, as this would lead to excessively heavy, costly, and impractical systems that trade off key requirements for gradient performance. Practical design considerations and required trade offs will lead to gradient nonlinearity with increased distance from isocenter. All MRI vendors employ software correction of gradient coil nonlinearity in 2D and 3D imaging and apply the correction based on harmonic analysis of the uncorrected fields to produce a 2D and 3D distortion corrected image suitable for diagnostic and guided treatment applications. Gradient coil designers use harmonic analysis methods, among other field target techniques, to design gradient coils. The requirement for large diameter, short length bores confounds perfect gradient linearity necessitating the use of spherical harmonic based 2D and 3D image correction to gradient nonlinearities for all MR manufacturers. All main field magnets for MRI generate strong B0 magnetic fields, which are designed to be homogeneous or of uniform intensity over a large volume. The typical size of the imaging volume is a 500 millimeter diameter spherical volume or DSV, over which the field intensity variations B0 inhomogeneity, which lead to image distortion, are within an acceptable diagnostic imaging range typically less than five millimeters of image distortion. Inhomogeneous regions at the edge of the manufacturer's DSV can be significant and may exceed acceptable distortion for precision MR guided interventions where less than two millimeters of image distortion is desired. It is noted that the B0 specification volume can vary between vendors from spherical, ellipsoidal, or even cylindrical shapes. When a human subject or phantom is placed in the bore of an MRI system, the magnetic susceptibility of the object will lead to undesirable perturbations of the B0 field. Vendors employ proprietary dynamic harmonic analysis shimming techniques to improve the B0 homogeneity. However, the larger perturbations at the interfaces between air and signal producing material cannot be corrected by shimming. Such examples include nasal, ear, throat canals in human subjects, and air acrylic singularity interfaces in phantoms. Advanced tools are required to correct for subject or phantom susceptibility-induced distortion. Susceptibility-induced B0 perturbation maps of human subjects can be used to correct patient distortion, whereas phantom finite element models can be used to assign susceptibility values to air, plastic, and MR liquid contrast media to correct for phantom susceptibility distortion as a function of field strength gradient strength, and frequency encode direction. Note that phantoms cannot adequately re represent patient distortion. One of the simplest ways to manage geometric distortion arising from B0 inhomogeneity and object susceptibility induced changes to B0 is to increase the gradient strength or bandwidth, which reduces the relative contribution to total distortion. In the example noted, a B0 perturbation equivalent to 500 Hz is assumed in the frequency encode direction. Scanning at 100 Hz per pixel and then 1000 Hz per pixel bandwidths is compared, showing B0 perturbation related distortion is reduced from 5 pixels to 0.5 pixels. Recommendations for MRGRT scanning are bandwidth minimums of 100 Hz per pixel at 0.35t, 300 Hz per pixel at 1.5t, and 600 Hz per pixel at 3t. Gradient nonlinearity is caused by considerations related to the cost of MRI equipment and the well-being of patients. 
it is recognized as a source of distortion across all systems, regardless of field strength. B0 inhomogeneity distortion is correlated to MR bore size constraints, which limit the 3D volume over which an acceptable field of view can be maintained for precision MR GRT applications. Typically, a 35 centimeter treatment volume as used in MR guided Linux. Lastly, the object susceptibility distortion due to the imaged object, a human subject or phantom, is reduced but not fully eliminated by vendor shimming algorithms and higher bandwidths. Several standards bodies and professional medical and scientific societies have recommendations on methods of measuring image quality parameters, with specific guidelines related to measuring 2D and 3D geometric distortion. Historically, recommendations have been biased towards 2D applications for diagnostic radiology, with testing specifications defined over a conservative 20 centimeter DSV. National and international standards have been updated to address the growing use and application of MRI for advanced 3D guided applications with larger 34 centimeter DSV specification volumes appropriate for MR SIM and MR Linux QA. With further recommendations released this year by the AAPM Task Group 284 and Electa MR Linux Consortium for MR SIM QA and MR Linux QA, respectively. Submillimeter accuracy and precision measurement and management of residual system and patient susceptibility distortion, even after 3D vendor distortion correction is applied, is of concern in the following use cases. Correcting for patient susceptibility distortion in planning and treatment, head and neck stereotactic radiosurgery, stereotactic ablative radiotherapy of the pancreas, sparing organs at risk, MR guided neurosurgery, improved diffusion weighted imaging, apparent diffusion coefficient calibration correcting for residual post vendor corrected gradient errors. Other OEM works in progress and future applications of MRGRT related to 4D motion, rotating gantries, diffusion weighted imaging, functional biomarkers, neuro and cardiac applications. How accurate do we need to be and how do we achieve it? Advanced and demanding applications such as diffusion weighted imaging, stereotactic radiosurgery, neurosurgery, 4D MR guided radiation therapy with adaptive beam tracking with real-time rotating MR Linux entries require submillimeter accuracy measurements. MRI distortion QA tools are required to ensure distortion is measured and acceptable use case limits are established to ensure accuracy of treatment. A time efficient method for measuring a full 3D distortion vector field using a lighter weight, large field of view, hollow boundary phantom, utilizing the harmonic analysis approach to achieve submillimeter accuracy is presented. How do we achieve submillimeter accuracy measurements of MRGRT image distortion? The harmonic analysis method is a fundamental analytical tool for well-defined boundary value problems, such as MRI gradient coil design, gradient nonlinearity distortion correction, and B0 shimming. The harmonic analysis method has recently been adopted for sparse and highly efficient sampling and measurement of inherent MRI B0 and gradient nonlinearity system distortion. In general, any hollow closed volume with boundary fiducials can be used. The measured boundary condition on an enclosed hollow volume, a cylinder for example, if sufficiently sampled, completely defines the conditions within the enclosed volume. Reduced to practice on an MRI geometric distortion phantom, this permits the use of a hollow, lighter phantom relative to liquid filled grids of the same size. The MOTUS QA MRID 3D phantom is an example of a harmonic analysis phantom that can be used to image geometric distortion over large fields of view appropriate for MRGRT QA. The measurement of distortion around the boundary of the phantom is sufficient to derive the entire 3D geometric distortion deviation vector field within the enclosed volume using harmonic analysis. Not only does this result in a lighter phantom compared to conventional grid phantoms, it also greatly reduces the number of detected fiducials required to measure MRI geometric distortion over large 35 centimeter fields of view typical of MRGRT. As an example, the MODIS QA MRI D 3D phantom contains just over 1500 fiducials to calculate distortion at over 11,000 locations within the volume of the phantom, essentially replacing a very high resolution conventional grid or fiducial array phantom containing 11,000 points. This greatly reduces cost, weight, and image processing and fiducial centroid detection time in automated software relative to conventional phantoms. 
All MR geometric distortion phantoms contain a liquid contrast media and a plastic that envelops the phantom. Common materials include water and mineral oil. However, it is noted that water uh, is absorbed by acrylic and plastics and can change structural dimensions. It has some negative attributes as well in that it can freeze during shipping. It has a high dielectric constant of about 80, which leads to signal intensity in homogeneity above 1.5 T and is not suitable as a phantom contrast medium at three Tesla. It also must be doped with metallic salts to get physiological T1 and T2 and does require preservatives to become bacteriostatic. Mineral oil, which is highly recommended, is not absorbed by acrylic and does not change dimensions of acrylic or plastic structures. It is inert to gas, stable and bacteriostatic, has a low freezing point, a low dielectric constant, making it suitable for use at 3T and even 7T, has a short physiological T1 at all field strengths from 0.35T to 3T with high contrast on T1 weighted imaging and it permits fast gradient echo scanning. Liquid filled plastic phantom structures in general have a mismatch between the volume coefficient of thermal expansions of the plastic and liquid contrast media. This can be verified by attaching a pressure gauge to measure internal pressure increase due to thermal expansion of a liquid fully filling a rigid plastic enclosure, such as any uncompensated liquid filled MRI geometric distortion phantom. A 20 degree Celsius increase in temperature in some cases results in an internal phantom pressure of 0.3 megapascal or 40 psi. The resulting internal pressure buildup is sufficient to cause deformation of the phantom walls, inducing geometric distortion of the phantom and is identified as a source of error. This source of error can be mitigated using pressure compensating expansion chambers designed into the phantom. The fluorosilicone rubber tube expansion chambers shown in the image on the right functions to maintain low pressure within the phantom and divert a thermally induced liquid expansion to a flexible elastomer tube while stabilizing the critical plastic structures and fiducial positions, maintaining critical geometric stability of the phantom with temperature increases. Phantom susceptibility induced distortion is identified as a source of measurement error. The difference in volume magnetic susceptibility between acrylic and mineral oil filled fiducials has been previously shown to add an estimated phantom induced distortion of less than 0.15 millimeters in the frequency encode direction at 1.5 T. External phantom induced susceptibility distortion due to susceptibility differences between air and acrylic and mineral oil can be calculated using finite element modeling techniques, taking into account B0 field strength, gradient strength, frequency encode direction, polarity, and subtract it as a source of error in automated software. Other sources of error that are related to geometry include manufacturing tolerances. Modus QA uses a six axis CNC milling machine to fabricate fiducials in acrylic material with 0.05 millimeter average tolerance. This manufacturing tolerance was verified by, through the use of a coordinate measurement machine which is calibrated to current ISO standards. Other factors related to geometry include the automated control point so finding software. Automated software removes inter and intra observer variants. Our software is confirmed to locate centroids within 0.1 millimeters or better. Our software implements highly refined and robust algorithms using advanced image processing and heuristics to work with phantom design elements. Also, the software identifies and corrects for phantom misalignment and patient table roll, pitch, and yaw to avoid interpreting these as distortion. These are all noted as sources of error. It is noted that ferrous contamination of the MR system bore is a common occurrence in the clinical workplace. Items such as coins, paper clips, and hairpins are commonly found despite screening systems which may not always detect small ferrous items. In an engineering test of ferrous content detection with MRID3D, various ferrous items are safely placed in a magnet bore and phase images of the axial localizer acquired in under 30 seconds can be viewed as a sensitive test to detect paper clips and coin surrogates. Multiple phase wrapping artifacts are clear when a paper clip or coin surrogate are introduced into the MR bore and detected by MRID3D. 
The AAPM Task Group 284 recommendation is for daily screening of ferrous contamination in MRSIM systems and, by extension, MRLinux systems. Error estimation of the MRID 3D harmonic analysis boundary phantom can be determined by acquiring two scans utilizing the reverse readout polarity method to separate B0 in gradient nonlinearity and noting the residual B0 distortion in the non readout directions. 0.03 millimeters in X and 0.02 millimeters in Z is noted. Residual B0 errors in the non readout directions include the following gradient coil crosstalk, variance in vendor spherical harmonic correction, variance in gradient coil manufacturing, phantom manufacturing tolerance, and partial volume effects on software twist correction. Note that separating B0 and gradient nonlinearity is recommended by AAPM Task Group 284. How do we achieve quick submillimeter accuracy for large field of view measurements in MRGRT distortion QA. Minimize error sources with good geometric distortion QA phantom design recommendations as noted below and the following standards. Use mineral oil. Plastic may absorb water and swell. Compensate for thermal expansion of MR contrast liquid. Use susceptibility matched plastic and MR contrast liquid. Use thick material walls to separate air material interface from control points and contrast media. Employ finite element techniques to remove residual phantom susceptibility distortion. Use a manufacturing method with tolerance below 0.1 millimeter and verify. Use automated software with heuristics to account and correct for phantom twist. Use a harmonic analysis based hollow boundary phantom with sparse and efficient sampling relative to grids and screen your MR SIM and MR LINAC for ferrous contamination, including hairpins and paper clips, daily and remove if found. Several of the recommendations presented today on reducing sources of error in geometric distortion phantoms are included in the following national and international MR image quality standards. The MODIS QA MRID 3D harmonic analysis based geometric distortion measurement system also meets task group and consortium recommendations released this year with regards to MR SIM QA and MR Linux QA. The MODIS QA MRID 3D geometric distortion system is characterized by very simple workflow. Place the hollow lighter phantom on the patient table, transferring it with a MR safe cart for ease of use. Landmark the phantom to isocenter and advance to scan in under one minute. Acquire a 3D T1 weighted gradient echo scan typically six minutes at 1.5 T with a relatively moderate bandwidth, short TR and TE times and a low flip angle. Transfer the DICOM series to host computer using the built-in DICOM receiver, network, USB, or DVD, all in under a minute. Import the DICOM series with Quasar MRID 3D software in under a minute and run the analysis, typically less than three minutes per series. In this way, one can obtain quick QA results from setup, scan, data transfer, obtaining a large field of view full 3D DVF analysis in 10 minutes total. The following software demonstration of the MODIS QA Quasar MRID 3D Geometric Distortion Analysis System highlights an efficient and feature-rich software tool for measuring MR system image distortion. As noted previously, MR data series acquired on an MR or MR Linux system can be imported into the MRID 3D software through the use of a memory device or directly with a built-in DICOM receiver connected to a PAC server. A basic mode for simplified viewing is available for daily QA, as well as an advanced mode with more detailed results and features for periodic QA. After data series are imported, the results view of the lower section of the software tabulates imported series with the ability to customize headings such as series, sequence, bandwidth, and field strength, for example, permitting users to organize the data in the most meaningful way. Selected series can be analyzed using the analysis engine with the software reporting the number of successfully identified control points on the phantom boundary 
typically 100%. There are a variety of data analysis formats and functions to choose from in the data display area of the software. A single series view, a series comparison view, calculation statistics, trending, reporting, 3D viewing, data transferring through DICOM servers, and settings editing. In the single series view, users have options to display cumulative plots, histograms, mean distortion as a function of z-position, and scatter plots. All statistics may be exported to a PDF report for hard copy printing or archiving by selecting the Work with MRID 3D Reports icon. The summary statistics chart in the upper left section of the screen reports significant statistics for single series view, including mean, standard deviation, maximum, P95, and percent above a user selected threshold. The phantom alignment chart next to the summary statistics chart reports geometric data derived through the use of heuristics and phantom design elements including contrastive boundary fiducials at reference positions on the boundary of the phantom and a central cuboid structure with three mutually perpendicular coordinate alignment axes to precisely measure the phantom isocenter position relative to DICOM isocenter and phantom twist about all three axes. This permits reporting patient table roll, pitch, and yaw, and any laser offsets to submillimeter resolution. The ability to separately measure B0 and gradient nonlinearity, as recommended by AAPM Task Group 284, is achieved through the acquisition of two scans with opposing polarity in the frequency encode direction, with all other scan parameters equal. The B0 GNL calculator function is applied to the two series, and a sum and difference calculation separates the two components for analysis, review, and reporting. The full 3D distortion vector field of any series can be viewed in the integrated MRID 3D DICOM viewer by simply clicking on the 3D visualization icon and selecting the desired series. A single series may be selected for further investigation, or two series for side-by-side -side comparison. There are several overlays to choose from depending on the statistics and the information required. The full phantom internal DVF and the boundary DVF can be displayed. In this case, we have two series acquired on the same scanner with and without vendor distortion correction. And we can see the difference in the two. A region of interest or ROI selector can be utilized to characterize distortion over predefined or customized standard volumes as required. When invoked, the ROI selector applies to the statistics summary views as well as in exported data. This concludes the MRID 3D software demonstration, and I will pass over audio to our moderator for the Q&A session. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, um, Enzo, for your great presentation. We're now going to take a look at some of the questions that have been sent in. So the first question that's come in is, can you expand more on how the MRID 3D identifies and corrects for phantom and table misalignment? Is it just the markings on the outside of the phantom? Hi, it's Enzo. Thanks for, for that great question. Um, so 
Yes, there are uh, several design elements uh, within the Phantom that are used uh, for correcting for any misalignments. As mentioned, uh, the Phantom has a series of fiducials on the boundary, and we have contrastive uh, boundaries at selected points to act as landmarks for the software to correctly register with the Phantom. And at the Phantom ISO Center, we have an XYZ alignment cube and orientation cube. At the center are three orthogonal channels that are filled with mineral oil, and the software will draw centroids uh, through those for alignment indicators. So with a combination of structure at the center of the Phantom and the boundary, we could precisely measure roll, pitch, yaw, and any offsets. So submillimeter accuracy is noted. Thanks very much. Our next question is, what are the various ways that users can import data into the MRID 3D? Is it compatible with PAX or Citrix? Uh, yes, uh, it is compatible with PAX. It does have a built-in uh, DICOM receiver that you can connect to um, the server. Uh, it is compatible with Citrix. You can also export to a USB stick, uh, burn to a DVD, uh, and other methods. Uh, PAX is, of course, very convenient uh, in that it's uh, direct connection and more efficient, but uh, there are several ways in which uh, users can import data into the software. Great, thank you. Um, our third question is, are all the results stored in the database? Is the uh, longitudinal view of distortion changes on a particular scanner available? Yes, it is a deba database, and we do have uh, a trending view uh, that I do not have populated in my software, but you can, of course, uh, look at machines, study series. Uh, you can select a number of different data sets to track, uh, set the date range, uh, charting options as well. Great. Um... Once I establish the appropriate MR sequences for my clinical use, do I need to use the MRI D3D for periodic QA? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, we've been asked this several times and the different sites have different philosophies and approaches. Uh, with regards to what you wanna track, the task group recommendations and consortium recommendations uh, do know that gradient nonlinearity typically does not change that much over time unless you have a, an upgrade from your vendor. Uh, B0 distortion, though, uh, can be a little more uh, variable in time. So some sites will, will actually do geometric distortion QA, uh, for example, a B0 uh, measurement on a daily basis, uh, whereas they will do a more intense uh, scan to get more information on a periodic basis, perhaps uh, monthly or every two weeks. So those are the typical timeframes that we see uh, recommended and used. Thanks very much. Just taking a look at the questions that have come in. Cormac asks, do you provide default sequences for each of the major MRI manufacturers to upload to the scanner consoles? Well, we do have recommendations for all of the vendors in terms of what uh, works quickly and easily out of the box. Uh, we do work with some of these vendors as well in the future to be able to imply, for example, an exam card or something that could be imported easily. Uh, but at this point, uh, we have a very thorough uh, recommendation and list of uh, protocol parameters that are very easy to follow. Excellent. Um, if I want to assess geometric distortion in a small region of the imaging volume, am I able to do this with a large field of view phantom like the MRI D3D? Yes, another great question, and absolutely you can do that. Uh, if we look at a typical system, and I think we chatted a bit about that, uh, we have an ROI selector that one can invoke. Uh, this can be customized. Uh, we have some standard settings uh, that um, have been developed in collaboration with uh, MR Linux manufacturers for, for daily and weekly and commissioning QA uh, requirements. Fantastic. This is the last question we have. So if you do have more questions, do send them in. And is the MRI D3D compatible with the phased array coil on the ViewRay Meridian? Yes, uh, it is fully compatible. Uh, one can acquire data with uh, either the body coil or the phased array coil. Uh, the phased array coil, of course, is used in clinical mode. Uh, for workflow, uh, it is faster and easier to use the body coil in MR mode. Uh, and the results are essentially identical between the two setups. 
So uh, we do recommend that customers validate this for themselves uh, and decide on, on which is more important to them, uh, time uh, or just using a phased array coil. Either work and either report the same result. Great, thank you. Um, you mentioned that you verified with a CMM the accuracy of machining for boundary. Um, I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to decipher this question um, for decidal locations. But you didn't mention how you verified the matching between these locations and what the software det detected. So. Uh, as far as the verification is, we, we have a CAD model that we use as the ground truth. Uh, and the CAD model, of course, is compared to uh, what we get in, um, in, in a coordinate measuring machine uh, to within 0 0.05 millimeters. So we actually use a precise CAD model from which the manufacturing and machine shop uh, derives the phantom. Uh, and we use uh, that uh, as our ground truth. Great. Um, Eric's question is, is it necessary or recommended to scan T2 or should all phantom scans be T1? Also in regard to um, GRID 3D phantom. Excellent question. Uh, we do support both T1 and T2 weighted. Uh, T2 weighted scans can be very long if the parameters are chosen to be heavily T2 weighted. Uh, so for regular QA, worst case is a T1 gradient echo sequence. Uh, and it's very fast. And it's usually advised to use your worst case type of scan if it could be acquired in five minutes versus a 20 or 40 minute scan for regular QA. Uh, of course, if you do have the time for periodic QA, uh, T2 scans can also be uh, analyzed and we do have some support for, for those scans as well. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Can the software analyze the scan with saturation bands? So uh, typically we do uh, request uh, good clean data, um, things that do not provide large artifacts. If the SNR is sufficient and can be resolved, uh, it may be possible uh, to, to, to do that. Uh, but you should certainly select, if you can, scan parameters that avoid these types of artifacts. Uh, this is very similar to using a phased array coil versus a body coil where you do have fairly large variations in signal intensity. Uh, it really depends on how um, dramatic the effect is on the image. Uh, so it is something that uh, would have to be either tested or validated. Thanks. Our next question, um, what are some of the advanced features in MRI D3D and what would they be used for? So this is a fantastic question that we get, uh, and this has always been something that's been interesting with the, the use of the harmonic analysis method. Uh, with the uh, harmonic analysis approach, uh, when, what you can do is calculate and derive spherical harmonic coefficients of your gradient laminarity. Uh, so if you, uh, and I, actually this is fairly timely information, so I can actually share this right now. So on the screen, what you're seeing here is a scan uh, where the vendor distortion correction has been turned off. Uh, and we've separated uh, gradient nonlinearity from B B0. So this is essentially the uncorrected image that you get from the MR system before correction. With the harmonic analysis method, you can actually measure the gradient tensors, all of the components uh, by using uh, our uh, spherical harmonic calculator. And you can derive a set of spherical harmonic coefficients uh, based on the uncorrected system. Users can then compare what the vendor provides them for their corrections to see any differences. And sometimes there are differences. What the vendor provides is something that's derived from a factory machine, and it's an ideal case. What customers get in the field is a system that may have variations in a number of different factors that could affect accuracy. So where th is this important? Um, we have a paper that is, has been accepted for publication and it uses the MRID 3D Phantom for empirical validation of gradient field models for an accurate ADC measured on clinical 3T MR systems in body on oncologic applications. Uh, it is in press, we expect this to be published within a month and we will make this publication uh, 
date available to customers that are interested in following up on uh, this application for essentially diffusion weighted imaging uh, for on oncological applications. Great. Um, is there a possibility to quantify distortions for sequences with a field of view which might not be big enough to image the whole phantom? So uh, fundamentally, the harmonic analysis method uh, requires the acquisition of data around the entire volume. So currently, that is not supported. Uh, but in theory, there are way, 2D methods that could be implemented as it works in progress. So we are looking at this uh, in the future. Wonderful. Thank you very much for answering all those questions. Um, I think that's all we're going to have time for today. Um, on behalf of Modis QA today and our presenter, thank you very much for joining us today. And we'll call this the end of the webinar and do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye for now.